Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going well. I'm in Luminar 4 again, and this time I'm talking about white balance. I've had some questions about it, and it's something that um, I honestly, I kind of fiddle, for lack of a better word, with white balance on every photo. And so I thought I'd walk through that because there's a number of things you can do to sort of manage and take control over the white balance in your photos. So um, we're going to dive into that today. Also, white balance, um, I think some people try to think that it's a complicated subject, and it's really not. In my opinion, it's really just about uh, how do you get a color cast that may occur in your photo out of your photo. In other words, um, it, it, it really comes into play with color temperature and tint. Um, you know, depending on the light source that you have in your photos, they have different color temperatures, and in doing so, they can change the white balance of your photo. So um, it may make your photo look really blue, for example, or really, you know, kind of warm, like a yellow. And white balance is really about finding kind of what uh, your human eye sees as white and recognizes as white. White balance and managing it is really about trying to get your photo, or I guess your camera, uh, to recognize what that white should be. So I hope that makes sense. Let's just jump into some examples here. Um, here's a photo and uh, the white balance setting is in the light tool. One thing I want to point out, this is a raw file and it's slightly different with JPEGs. Um, I shoot in raw all the time and that's really all I shoot in. And I shoot in auto white balance. And the reason is, is because I just let the camera do the auto white balance, but because it's a raw file, I have more control over it in post. So if I don't like the white balance, it's easier to fix later. So honestly, I don't mess with white balance at all. I shoot in auto white balance 100% of the time and it works just fine for me. Um, you may want to consider um, shooting in RAW if you don't. I think, well, I don't think, um, I, I know that it gives you more flexibility over your editing and uh, it's just because the files are, uh, they contain more data, right? So anyway, um, I'm in a RAW file. If you have a RAW file, it is different with a JPEG or TIFF or whatever, but if you have a RAW file, um, you have three ways to adjust the white balance. The first one is, you'll see this with a RAW file, and that is these pre, um, I don't want to call them presets, but they're, they're kind of like presets. Um, so if you just click on them, it'll, it's a very minor adjustment there, but it'll adjust the, uh, the white balance of your photo based on you know, what this little preset is. So if you're telling it shady, it'll do that. Tungsten, it'll do that, right? Which is really blue. Fluorescent, a little bit less blue. And then of course, flash is the other one. That's a, that's a little bit more normal. That's actually probably about what it looked like. Let me see, there's the before and after. So it's slightly a little bit more blue. I'm gonna hit reset. Um, that's method one. And that, um, if you don't have a raw file, you will not have this drop down. It's only gonna say as shot. Um, Whoops. Uh, the second one is the eyedropper. Now the eyedropper, if you click on that, you activate the eyedropper. When you come over here, you can see this little square here and it says pick a target neutral. So this is actually a really great example because that's a really neutral color that I have. This is not. Um, and so the R and the G, I'm gonna move this back up to the top. The R and the G and the B there represent the red and the green and the blue. And if those three numbers down there below are fairly equal, you do have a fairly neutral uh, color that you selected. So if I click that, nothing really changed because the white balance was actually pretty good in this photo. Um, I can come back over here. If I tell them that this, this is a target neutral, this green, you will see the R, G, and the B. The G, which represents green, is a higher number than any of the other two. That's telling you it's more green. But if I click that, it's gonna say, oh, well, and if that's neutral, then the photo should look like this. So it kind of turns everything blue, which you know looks, uh, looks pretty bad. Um, if I come over here, and let's say I take one of these darker colors, there's R, G, and B. Those are actually all three pretty equal. And there you go. Um, you notice that even though it was a dark color, those three were essentially uh, equal, uh, the numbers. So it says, yeah, that's a neutral color. Um, let me try something else. Let's go over here to like this uh, yellow. Um, you can see that the red, the green, and the blue numbers down below are not equal. And the red, which yellow is you know, basically a component of, is the highest number. So I'm telling that that that's a neutral color and it, it takes it basically away from that warm color and airs it more towards the blue here over on the temperature slider. So that, that's called the color picker and that allows you to do some really good customization to your photo. Now you can come in here and do that 
Uh, and then also use the third method, which is these two sliders here. So you can color pick it or use uh, one of these drop downs. And then in doing so afterwards, come in here and make adjustments with the temperature and tint sliders. My preference, honestly, is just to use the temperature and tint sliders. I use them all the time, like I said, in just about every photo. And that's my preferred way to do it. Part of the reason why is because I'm not necessarily always going for a neutral kind of white balance, like um, a true, uh, like it says here, a target neutral. I'm not necessarily always going for that in my photos. I tend to like blue. I shoot a lot at the edges of the day. Um, and so if I get dramatic sunset, I want to amp up the warmer colors and maybe the tint. And if I have uh, been shooting in blue hour, I may want to accentuate the blue. So I might make it te temperature wise a little bit cooler. So for me, Temperature and tint um, and playing with those, uh, you know, as part of white balance is a is a big thing that I do in editing. So um, just keep that in mind when you watch my other videos. If you do, um, I play with temperature, temperature and tint a lot, and that's how I prefer to set white balance. But you can do it any of these three ways on a raw file. Now, there's one other thing you can do, and that is, let's say you want different white balance in different parts of the photo. I don't really know why you'd want to do this, but it is an option for you. So you could go over here to layers and I'm going to go get a new adjustment layer and I'm going to go into light. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, you know what? I want to make, um, I want to make the bottom of this fairly blue. I want that water kind of blue and maybe a little bit of tint. So something like that, it's impacting the entire photo. But when you have light on an, uh, an additional layer on the base layer, you don't have masking with light, but you do, uh, on subsequent layers. So you can go in here, edit mask, get a gradient, and you can just click and drag that gradient, something about like that, and create that blue or cast along the bottom of the photo. And so now that's a different uh, white balance than the top of the photo. So if you wanted to go put a separate white balance on the top, just remember here, uh, you've got negative 39 and 11. If you want to change the top, get another adjustment layer, and then go into light. And now I'm going to do something, uh, I might go a little bit bluer up there. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of making this up here in terms of the numbers. And now I'm going to get edit mask. I'm going to do gradient again. And I'm going to take the gradient from the top down. Um, and I'm going to do something about like that. Now it's kind of running over the buildings a little bit. But what I've done is created a separate white balance for the top. In, in you know compared to the bottom again not something i really ever do but it's an idea if you're trying to do something creative maybe like a bicolor toning kind of look um, and then after you've set the mask you can come in here and make adjustments to it so i think i was at negative 39 11 so you know maybe here i want to go negative 33 15 or negative 33 20 or something like that to give a slightly different kind of color look to the sky. Here's a before and after. You can see that, you know, it was a very warm photo, uh, the, the, the base kind of raw file, but with some custom white balance work, I was able to make it a bit more blue. Now, having done all this, this is not necessarily how I would edit the photo. This is an example of how white balance works and how you can control it in your photos. But I don't recommend just hitting a white balance and then leaving the rest of the photo alone. I definitely recommend doing some base raw development with the light filter on the base level. And then you can also include color temperature and tint work, white balance work, if you will, um, on that uh, base filter. Or if you want to do something custom like I just did where you added it multiple layers and mask in separate white balance adjustments for top and bottom, you can do that as well. But I definitely recommend developing the, the raw file, or even if it's just a, a JPEG out of camera, develop that before you go into um, adding other layers and doing other things. So that's really a quickie on white balance. We touched on the three different ways you can do it, the dropper, the drop down menus, and the sliders. And um, we talked about how you can use that and impact the look of your photo. As I said at the beginning, it really is about how do you manage the color temperature of your photo. And the color temperature is affected by external light sources, whether it's street lights in a city, interior lights in a house or in a church or something, or just daylight like in this photo. So, uh, and also time of day, the light uh, temperature is gonna vary. Another thing to think about actually where white balance can come into play is if you're shooting a winter image, let's say it's like a blue hour and you're shooting some snow, and uh, like a blue hour nighttime sky, um, the snow's gonna look blue. 
And so white balance can come into play there where you want to get that snow looking white again. That's, a, that's another example of where white balance can come into play. So if you're not using white balance to edit your photos or to have an impact on the look of your photos, I definitely recommend experimenting. I hope this video has given you some things to think about and maybe some ideas to try on your own photos. And thank you for watching, my friends. Please do subscribe, like, share, and comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll see you soon with another video. Have a great day. Take care and adios.